Well, welcome as we continue our Advent series uh, here on CBM Today. And as I mentioned yesterday, I'm taking these thoughts from my book, God's Unspeakable Gift. And um, some of you have a copy of that. And if you'd like to know how to get one, just contact our ministry. We'll get the information to you. But um, one of the features of the book is the Advent uh, calendar. It has a little devotional for each day of Advent. Now, what we're doing on our broadcast is I'm putting three of these together on each broadcast. So we got uh, some more territory to cover today. And then tomorrow we'll do the same. And then next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the Lord willing, we'll have three more of those thoughts per day. And then the week of Christmas, the same. So we hope you enjoy these thoughts. They're just glorious to put your mind on. And of course, um, uh, the promise of the Messiah, the Savior, it started in the Garden of Eden, as we mentioned yesterday. And uh, it, there's a thread that runs from the Garden all the way to Bethlehem, the Bethlehem manger. Historically, God is marching towards uh, the Bethlehem manger. This is his big plan. He's going to bring a Savior into the world. 4,000 years of human history transpired, and there's certain events that are just essential to the fulfillment of the promise given in Genesis 3.15. So we talked a little bit yesterday about, for example, uh, uh, the, the global flood, Noah's day. Well, see, you and I are looking and thinking, well, the Lord preserved the human race. Uh, there was a cataclysmic global judgment because of man's sin and the Lord preserved the race. Well, he did more than just preserve the race. He preserved the line that leads from the first Adam all the way down to uh, Mary. And uh, this confirms the fact that Jesus, of course, is uh, fully human. And in fact, uh, he's going, going to be the second or the last Adam. So when the Lord preserved Noah and his family, he's actually preserving a line that leads from Adam all the way to his son. And that was essential. Uh, we also touched upon the fact that post-flood, uh, there was a great event. Uh, it's called the Tower of Babel, a very significant part of world history. It ought to be studied in schools. I'm afraid that uh, for the most part, it's totally neglected. But you cannot properly understand our world without uh, that little snippet of world history in the book of Genesis concerning the Tower of Babel. Uh, there's only one race, the human race. Lots of people groups, lots of ethnic groups, a number of nations. Where did they come from? How did it all start? It started at the Tower of Babel. And uh, it's very significant. The point, though, coming out of the Tower of Babel post, in the post-flood world, the narrative of Scripture gets focused on a man named Abraham. And it's going to continue its focus then upon the specific nation that he fathered. Now, Abraham was the father of many nations. But however, specifically, he was the father of the nation of Israel. And it will be through Israel that God keeps his promise of Genesis 3.15 and provides a savior for not just the seed of Abraham, uh, but the entire world. But it would be through the seed of Abraham that God would indeed bless all the families of the earth. We talked a little bit about that yesterday. Now let's pick up our discussion a little bit. Um, as we move along, I have a key verse for you from Genesis 49, verse 10. And um, this little devotional entitled, The Promised Seed Came Through Judah. This is a, just a fascinating uh, point to be made here. Uh, Genesis 49, 10 says, and it's actually Jacob on his deathbed. He's blessing his sons. But he says of Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. In time, the Lord did extend his covenant uh, with Abraham to his son Isaac and his grandson Jacob. Eventually, Jacob's sons became the fathers of 12 distinct tribes within the nation of Israel. Most of you are familiar with that. Interestingly, as I just quoted here, uh, just before Jacob died, he pronounced, uh, you know, prophetic blessings on all of his sons, really. But um, the one that especially stands out is the one I'm focusing on because it's connected to Messiah. Jacob 
prophesied a ruler would come through his son Judah. He refers to him as Shiloh, which means rest and tranquility. This title carries the thought of one who brings peace and is a special reference to the Messiah. So per this prophecy, the promised Savior could only come through the tribe of Judah. Uh, as well as we shall also see, the Lord further selects a specific family within this tribe from which the Messiah must come. Now, you can meditate on this verse a little more along the way. It was uh, given, uh, you know, uh, before the nation of Israel had fully formed. I mean, God is dealing with Abraham. Isaac, Jacob, and they know the covenant God has made. Uh, of course, Abraham did, but Isaac, Jacob, they knew the covenant God made with their father, Abraham. Jacob, now he's prophesying as he's about to leave here. And he says to Judah, um, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, uh, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. So he's predicting the arrival of a special person in history that will come not only through Israel, but specifically through the tribe of Judah. And um, unto him shall be the uh, gathering of the people. All right, now here's something that I want to point out to you as, before we move on to another thought today. God's word goes into very specific detail concerning the identity of the Messiah. In this way, no one should be misled concerning the identity of the true Savior of the world. Now, some of you that are crossing paths with this broadcast, perhaps, you haven't thought seriously about your relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. You certainly know Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Perhaps you've heard that, but you've never thought about it much. Perhaps some of you, you know, you've been so uninterested or whatever the case might be, in some cases just neglectful, you just didn't want to hear more. You haven't paid much attention, but you need to. And you need to understand this. God has clearly marked out the true Messiah for the world. The one and only Son of God, the true Christ. You know, in our world, there's many false Christs. Well, how do we know which way to follow? Which, which, way, which path is right? Which, which individual is worthy of our devotion, our worship, our faith? Well, God has, in unmistakable terms, uh, identified the Messiah for the world. And uh, these specific details, and you know, as you get in the Christmas season, those of you that know the Lord, you've studied these passages before, I'm sure. But this is one of the characteristics of the Christmas season. We, we look back at the history and we know the Son of God was born, but we're compelled to think about, you know, he was born in Bethlehem and and uh, he was born of a virgin and uh, Herod tried to kill him. And um, there's other scriptures that, that are connected to his first coming. And all these details uh, identify Mary's son, Jesus, as the true Messiah. Uh, whoever the true Messiah is, he must come through Israel, but he must come through Judah. And in a moment, we're going to discover he's got to come through a certain family in the tribe of Judah. All right, let's move on. Um, <clears throat> let's focus on another key verse as we meditate on some of these thoughts during the Christmas season. And it's found in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. And uh, in this passage, um, well, let me read it first. It says, uh, I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now, God has spoken by his son, and I love to preach this sermon. I preach it different times. Uh, I'm just giving you some devotional thoughts today on this subject. But in Deuteronomy chapter 18, of course, Moses is now leading Israel and, and uh, they're going to soon enter into the promised land and so forth. But in this uh, passage, there's a specific statement made by the Lord. He says, now, I'm going to raise up a prophet. He's going to be like unto you, Moses. Um, <clears throat> and the Lord specifically says, he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. 
Now, if you put this passage, Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, with Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 8, you just see the continuity. It's just amazing. God, who at different times and in different ways in the past spoke to us by our fathers, has in these last days spoken to us by his son. Um, that is so significant. Um, Moses was rightly revered by the nation as a prophet of God. He stood in a place of authority as he taught the word of God to the people. So it was in that context, Moses spoke of a greater prophet to whom the people should give heed. They were to listen. So in the book of Hebrews, which I just quoted, God has in these last days spoken to us by his son. You see, in the office of prophet, Jesus carried God's last word to mankind. Now, I got to keep moving today, but this is very important. My friends, God has said all he's going to say to this world. He has spoken in these last days through his son. And Jesus is God's final word to mankind. And we need to listen. Uh, several times during the public ministry of Jesus, the father spoke from heaven, emphasizing the importance of hearing his word at the mouth of his son. He declared, quote, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. The Christmas season reminds us that God has spoken to the world by his son. And we all must take heed to this word. Our salvation depends upon it. Do you re realize that today? Are you listening? Are you listening to what God has said through his son? My friend, what you do with the word of Christ is going to determine whether you spend eternity in heaven or whether you perish everlastingly, cut off from the presence of the Lord. Listen well. I pray you'll do it. Now we're going to wrap up today with one more thought and um, another key verse, which is found this time in 2 Samuel uh, chapter 7 and verse 16. And uh, reading this, I'll, I'll put some uh, context around it here in a moment. 2 Samuel 7, 16, And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Samuel is talking to David. And the interesting thing is the Savior, the Messiah that's promised, he's got to be of the seed of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He must come through the tribe of Judah. And now he must be from the house of David. David was of the tribe of Judah, but his family was one of many families that constituted the tribe of Judah. But now the Messiah must come through the house of David. Christmas is clearly rooted in the history of a unique people. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Judah, and Moses are prophetically connected to the Savior. Thus, the promised Messiah must come through the nation of Israel. And with that said, again, this key verse I just read introduces us to a very important event in his, Israel's history. Um, the Lord makes a covenant with David. Now, we've already made reference earlier in this uh, short study, God's covenant with Abraham. Well, God has made a covenant with David as well. And this uh, covenant uh, speaks to an everlasting kingdom. You know, I just love Christmas for a lot of reasons, but this is one of the big ones. I mean, you get your mind on Christmas and the, there was a king born at Christmas. Jesus Christ is the king. He didn't have his kingdom at his first coming, but he will have his kingdom at his second coming. This is what God is promising to David. And thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Well, guess who is destined for that throne? The Lord Jesus. Uh, he is going to sit on the throne of his father, David. And uh, you can compare that to the words that the angel spoke to Mary in Luke chapter 1. And uh, he very specifically makes reference to the kingdom. Um, <clears throat> there will be a special descendant from the house of David who will rule on his throne forever. The prophets who later ministered in Israel identified the Messiah as that promised seed. 
This covenant is destined to be fulfilled when God gives Jesus the throne of David in a future kingdom on earth. The coming kingdom of Christ upon the earth is a certainty. And it's certainly a part of the Christmas message and it ought to fill our hearts with joy during the season. What a glorious hope we have today in Christ, my friend. Do you know him as your Lord and Savior? If you do not, it's time to yield your heart and life to Christ. Who do you serve? You say, well, I don't serve anybody. That's not true. You serve something or someone. Who, who, who has the devotion of your heart? You say, well, I don't have a God. Yes, you do. Now, I'm almost out of time today, but I'll, leave, I'll just dump that in your lap. You're serving someone or something. Can I just tell you today that each one of us need to come to a place of humble repentance where we turn to the Lord and we recognize that He so loved us, He gave us His Son, Christ is the promised Messiah. The Lord Jesus is the Savior that was born uh, during the season that we're making reference to. And, and Christ is God's gift to the world. Uh, it's through the gift of His Son that you and I can be forgiven. Now, Christ was born. He, he didn't save us by His birth, but He came with a purpose. And He took to Himself human nature that He might die for us. Christ has died for you and he's risen for you. Will you open your heart to the Lord Jesus today? I hope you will. Bye. We're going to pick up here uh, tomorrow, have another one of these sessions, and I hope you will join us then. God bless you.